Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. In section 10.2, we are going to discuss the relationship between congruent chords of a circle. We're going to piggyback off of what we did in section 10.1, which is regarding the diameter. Is if it's perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and vice versa. Well, in this theorem today, we're going to talk about if two chords of a circle are equal distance from the center, then they are congruent. So let's go ahead and just draw a description of this. So if we draw two chords here, so I have chord AB and chord CD and circle P, if the distance We'll call that circle P. So if XP is congruent to PY, then we would know that AB is congruent to CD. The two chords are congruent. Okay, so in other words, if they are equal distance from the center, which is the perpendicular, then we know the two chords are congruent. Using that same type of diagram there, if we have two chords of a circle are congruent, then they are equal distance from the center of the circle. So it's just the reverse of what we just did. So in our case here, if we have AB is congruent to CD, then PX would be congruent to PY. So the reverse. So if we know that, again, this is a little more difficult to mark, if we have Again, chords A, B is congruent to C, D, then we automatically know that they are the same distance. Oops, I'm sorry, I should have used a different symbol there. Then we know that those are going to be concurrent. Okay. So let's take a look at our first example here. In the following circle, we know that AB is 15 minus X, so we're going to label our diagram here. We've got 15 minus X, and we know that CQ is 2X minus 5, and OP, which is equal to OQ, so in other words, those are congruent to each other, and therefore they are 2. This tells us something from our previous theorems that we just discussed there. This then tells us that our chords AB and CD are congruent. So in order to find CD, we have a couple different approaches here. Um, again, remember from section 10.1, we know if it's perpendicular that the chord is bisected. So we'd have CQ is congruent to QD. So this QD would also be equal to 2X minus 5. And then we would know, again, from what we just discussed earlier, 2x minus 5, those two of them times 2 would be equivalent to the other chord AB because they are both equidistant from the center. And then we could go ahead and solve from there. So when we subtract that over, we'll get the 3x, add over the 10, so we'll get that to be... 25, I'm sorry, we want to add over the x, so that would give us 5x equals 25, therefore x would be 5. And again, as always, as I talk about in class, please go back and read. What are we actually looking for? Here we want to find CD, so in our case here, CD, so you could either plug it into the 2x minus 5 and 2x minus 5, multiply that by 2, or you could simply just plug it into the 15 minus x because that is what CD is also equal to, which is AB, chord AB. So 15 minus 5, so CD would be equal to 10. And then the last part here we are also looking for, and I'll switch colors, we're looking for the radius. So again, piggybacking off of what we did yesterday, now we're going to have to go to that second part draw in our radius, and we're going to draw it in where it's helpful, and this forms our right triangle here. So now we can go ahead and we know this is bisected, again CD is 10, so from yesterday we know that that is 5, and we can go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem there to find our radius. So if I extend this page here a little bit, 
So we'll have 2 squared plus 5 squared equals r squared. And again, this is not a triple, so we would have to go ahead and go through that process to get the radius simplified radical form. So we'd get that to be the square root of 29. Okay. And then we have our second example. Suppose a chord of a circle is 4 inches from the center and is 24 inches long. Find the length of the radius. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our circle. I'm going to get us a nice circle there. And again, let's label. Suppose a chord of a circle is 4 inches from the center. I believe I actually have a typo here. I apologize. That should be 5 inches from the center. So when we draw that in our circle, again, that is the perpendicular distance. That would be 5. Um, and the chord is 24 inches long. And again, because we know that's perpendicular, we know that is bisected. And we know that is going to be 12. We are looking for the radius. So when we switch colors, we're looking for this radius. So that is going to be, again, here we have our triple. So we got that to be 5, 12, and our radius would be 13. And our last example, example three. So again, we have an equal hour triangle with a perimeter of 24 is inscribed in a circle. How far from the center um, each side is is what we're looking for. So let's draw our circle. Again, you want to make these fairly large so you have plenty of room to do your work when you're actually drawing in your radii and drawing in your equilateral triangle and such. So please make those a decent size so you're not really trying to scrunch your work in. So we know it's an equal hour triangle and we know the perimeter is 24. Therefore, again, all the sides are congruent. So we get each side to be 8. So we can label those as 8. Okay. All these would be eight. We want to find how far from the center each circle is. Each side is, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and draw in the center. And we're looking for this distance right here. And again, we're looking for the distance. So we again know that's perpendicular and it's bisected. So each of those portions of that chord would be divided into four. And now, let's draw our radius in. So now we come to a point we only actually know one side. So we have to think about what do we know about an equilateral triangle. As we discussed previously in the year, we know an equilateral triangle is also equiangular. Therefore, each angle is 60 degrees. So we know this is 60 degrees. And therefore, this would be bisected. That would be a 30 degree triangle right there. And then we'd be able to actually come up with our ratios in a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Across from the 30 would be equal to x. Across from the 60 would be equal to x root 3. Across from the hypotenuse, across from the right angle is the hypotenuse, which is 2x. So let's go ahead and take the 4, set that equal to x root 3, and solve for that x. So divide by the root 3, and then again, we always must rationalize the denominator. So we get x equals 4 root 3 over 3, which is what, exactly what we're looking for over here. That is the distance away from the center each side is. So this is the conclusion of section 2.2. Two. Tend to.